Hello, I'm Dr. Lauren Houghton from the Department of Epidemiology at Columbia University's Mailman School of Public Health. This video is part of our Mixed Methods series to serve as an introduction to public health scientists. This session discusses future directions and mixed methods. In our introductory video, we described the core mixed method designs but mentioned that there are complex designs that are based on those core designs. Therefore, the future of mixed methods really includes complex designs such as experimental or interventions, case studies, participatory social justice designs, as well as evaluation. And so while these expand on the core designs, there really is room for a lot of future work about how to use mixed methods in these particular contexts. I have been de developing ways mixed methods can improve studies concerned with causal inference from a pluralist perspective. Primarily, mixed methods can help bring the perspective of the population under study into elements of causal thinking. This figure aligns the core mixed method designs with aspects of causal identification and causal explanation. In the middle is the two by two table that is central to epidemiology and related public health fields. It is surrounded by a dark blue circle representing quantitative methods. The outer light blue circle is qualitative methods. The orange arrows represent exploratory sequential studies that first use qualitative methods followed by quantitative ones. The green arrows represent explanatory sequential designs that use quantitative methods first and then qualitative methods. The double black line represents convergent and or embedded designs. The choice of mixed method study design depends on the research questions as well as what aspect of causal inference the researcher wants to improve. So I also see that mixed methods can help researchers develop the underlying causal structure of their studies. Causal diagrams, including but not limited to two DAGs, are one way of illustrating the underlying causal structure of, of research questions. Population scientists usually build DAGs using their edict perspective, external to the population under study. Combining this edict top-down approach with an emic insider perspective of the context within which the phenomenon occurs provides a new approach to building DAGs. So what qualitative methods offer a DAG is the meaning of variables and the connections between them from an emic perspective. During qualitative data analysis, mapping options in qualitative coding software, such as NVivo, help to identify important nodes and the meaningful connections between them. Um, these mind maps, uh, such as that, the figure on the left, uh, show that it's very similar as building a DAG. In NVivo, nodes are the qualitative codes and child codes that researchers generate. So in this example, we show a sequential exploratory design that collects qualitative data from women with early onset breast cancer on the left to build a causal diagram to test with quantitative methods on the right. Qualitative analysis identifies parent codes such as air pollution, stress, marital status as possible causes of cancer that women mentioned. In telling their story of getting early onset breast cancer, women said, I found a lump while on honeymoon, or I thought it was related to breastfeeding. And such qualitative data yield two child codes, parity and breastfeeding, under the, the parent code marital status. These five codes become variables in a DAG, and qualitative data, as well as evidence from previous studies, inform the connections drawn between them. The epidemiologist can test the idea that breastfeeding is positively associated with early onset breast cancer, an idea that may not have had the researcher may not have had prior to the interviews, since breastfeeding is protective for postmenopausal breast cancer in, in the literature. So really, using this exploratory sequential design, the researcher um, uses the emic perspective to help form a new hypothesis and test that with their quantitative methods.
Mixed methods can also be crucial in the integration of omics and emics. So in the era of omics, when methodological advances allow for the incorporation of genomics, epigenomics, and metabolomics, among other omics, into clinical practice, emics may point to what is ultimately culturally compelling and feasible in real-world settings. As we highlighted in the previous video, Emix is from the field of anthropology and is the mapping of insider perspectives from individuals directly affected by the problem under consideration. And what I argue is by bringing emix into the burgeoning field of omics that we can maybe lessen that time it takes from bench to bedside and avoiding any problems where when you finally get to implement a study that you've already considered the contextual factors that can really help facilitate it.